I think uh, it would be much more significant than the Industrial Revolution. So what's at stake right now? Oh, <laughs> what's at stake is the future of humanity. We're already experiencing the things that a lot of people talk about as if they're in the future. If humanity is going to lose the game, it's going to lose the game against itself. We are the biggest problem that we're facing. Artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is the study of how to make computers intelligent. Uh, and what that means is how to make them do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. And the right thing is what we want them to do? So that's uh, the big question. So for example, if you imagine a simple automated vacuum cleaner, and you say, okay, I want you to clean up as much dirt as you can. Well, the best way to clean up a lot of dirt is to keep dumping it out again and then cleaning it up immediately, right? Which cleans up a lot of dirt, but is not what you wanted. The tricky part is how to specify the objective correctly. And uh, if we do that wrong, then we would have machines that are pursuing some objective that isn't exactly aligned with what we want, uh, but because they're more intelligent than us, uh, we might not be able to stop them. We were using machines to amplify human muscles. Now we're using machines to amplify the human brain. And the question is how fast and how far. People are saying spectacular things, and I'm a little bit more skeptical. It's clear that this is a dramatic revolution, but I don't think we're going to have anytime soon in our lifetime machines that have completely human qualities. I think it's prudent for us to assume that these breakthroughs will occur. Um, and the reason it's prudent for us to assume that is that that provides an incentive to solve what we call the control problem. Right, so the control problem being, okay, once we have a super intelligent machine, how do we make sure that we control it forever? Let's forget how intelligent they are. Um, you know, you can, you can have a machine making any kind of decision, and if a human is not in the loop, you run the risk of um, uh, you know, sort of outsourcing the ethics in a way that will absolve humans for the, re for the responsibility, and that's a danger. We're going to be surrounded with machines, virtual and physical machines. These machines will be part of the social fabric of our reality. And for that to happen, for that to happen also in, in, a, in a responsible way, these machines will need to have abilities to, to adjust to and express moral principles. There's no way around it. Consciousness is a really central ingredient in that ability to model the world and extract its moral principles. So the main challenge we face now is how do we build a conscious machine? We're already experiencing the things that a lot of people talk about as if they're in the future, right? So we're already in the AI revolution. We already have all this data. It's already altering our everyday experience. Today, young people uh, who use their smartphones are surrounded by this soup of algorithms that are giving them very helpful suggestions, but they're not transparent. And so you will make decisions, life decisions, everything from which Korean barbecue to buy to who to marry from this machine in the palm of your hand. And you have no idea what its motivations are. And that's what I worry about. The point is with, with machine learning, the better the model is, the less data you need to do a prediction. So if we get a really, really good model of lots of different people, then we only need a little tiny piece of data about one person to make a bunch of predictions about them. There's a lot of information from even just one picture. And so this is why we're, we're suddenly handing you know, ourselves and each other and people we don't even know a lot of power. The rich irony about the internet is that we in America thought that it would be the best tool in the world for disseminating democracy to other countries. And the rich irony is, in fact, it's been used to undermine American democracy. I think if we don't get this right, we wind up with a lot of totalitarian governments. And I think that's not stable. So people will start to use AI to, to create more powerful kinds of malware that are better at stealing money and blackmailing people and subverting nations and doing all kinds of stuff like that. Um, 
And so one route to failure would be that you put more and more AI into that uh, and it gets more and more out of control and then something, something bad happens. And I think that's a huge problem. I can assure you that within a decade, um, someone's mom will call them on the telephone and say, hey, I've lost my password, my bank password, but it won't be their mom, it won't be a machine. In the long run, you would gradually replace everything that humans are doing. And so the machines can carry on our civilization. They can make sure that the food supply is, is stable and that bridges are built and houses are built, and, um, which sounds great um, until you realize that that's an admission of failure. Because what we do all day right. then. That just says, okay, human beings have no function, no, no value to the rest of humanity, so you can be fed and housed and entertained. Um, and we'll look at cat videos. And that's it. You'll watch cat videos for, for the rest of your life. But is it humans versus machine, us versus them? Um, no, it's us versus us um, with technology. What it is to be human is to be an ape that's enhanced with AI, right? And we enhance ourselves, and that's the most important thing. We will all be cyborgs um, in some sense. Already we are cyborgs, right? We have our telephones, a lot of our memory sits in our phones. I would not know any phone number of any of my friends. I used to in the past, but it's not necessary anymore. So we are already becoming cyborgs in a sense, and we didn't even notice the change. And this will just, it will be more of, of, of that kind of development that will guide us into the future.